be front runners for LaMarcus Aldridge. The veteran big man completed a buyout with the Spurs. There's the big three in the East, fellas, and then there's everybody else. You know who they are, the Bucks, the Sixers, the Nets. But keep in mind, Miami, they came from behind last year. They were the underdogs, and they are the defending Eastern Conference champions. Max Kellerman, should the East big three worry about Miami? Yeah, absolutely. Miami, it's, it's a big four now. Let's be honest. Miami underachieved early. We knew that, you know, regression to the mean. It doesn't always mean you go backwards. It means you go back to what you expect. That's what's good. That was happening with Miami anyway before the trade. But you know what this is like? It's like a Space Jam. You know, they don't have a Jordan on that team. The other teams in that guy, right? Look at Giannis. Look at Embiid. Look at KD and Harden and Kyrie, right? There's, there's no one like that on the Heat. Apologies to Jimmy Butler. But they got the Monstars, a version of that. They got a whole bunch of guys who are really good, who can go get their own shot, who can hit it from the outside, as Stephen A. would say, who are rough riders. Think about how many different guys can come at you at the Heat. Uh, and I'm not even talking about, like, bam, right? I'm talking about ball handlers who can shoot, create for others, score themselves, you know, create their own shot under pressure. Obviously, Jimmy Butler, and we saw in the playoffs last year, Tyler Hero. You add Oladipo to that mix. I mean, those three would be enough to be like, oof. But you also still have Dragic, and you still have Kendrick Nunn. You have five, six dudes. And I didn't mention Iguodala because he's old and he's not that kind of player, but he's still a valuable piece. You have five, six dudes coming at you in Miami that way. There is no KD. There is no Harden on that team. There's no Giannis. But you got a whole bunch of guys who can really play. They're going to be a problem. And I would not call the East a big three anymore. I'd say it's a big four. I'm not sure about that. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just not sure. And here's the reason why I'm sure and I have the right to sit up here and be a bit indecisive. Miami started off the season 7 and 14. We looked at them, COVID ravaged them, et cetera, et cetera. And we was like, but we also looked at them and said, what the hell is going on? They don't seem to be the same. Jimmy Butler hadn't seen to seem to be the same or whatever. They were 7 and 14. Next thing you know, what did they win? Four straight. They won 10 out of 13 games. They ended up 517 and 17. And we said, here Miami come. I actually took credit. I said, you know what? I called motivated. them on the carpet. I motivated them because you know how important it is for me to be in South Beach. I mean, I'm still miserable over the fact that last year's NBA Finals was between Miami and L.A., which is my dream matchup. And it was a bubble play. I mean, could you imagine us in wish. June? We would have been in South Beach and La La. I mean, your it, prayers it, have it, to it, be specific. It, 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 you got to make them specific. Listen, listen, that's the only thing that listen, the Lakers are a different town when the, the, the LA is a different town when the Lakers are special. You know that better than me, you and Molly, because you both lived out there for years. The Lakers, the Clippers can be successful, but there's something different about LA when the Lakers are successful. It's just something different. Okay. But the consolation prize could be the Clippers. It still puts us in L.A. at the Staples Center. I'm good with that. And then we talk about Miami. I'd be good with that, too. Here's the problem. Once again, four straight. Then they won 10 to 13. They got to 500. Then after they got to 500, Max, they won five straight. Okay? And, and then they ended up like 22 and 18 or so, right? They've lost five straight. And then we go to Oladipo. And let me tell you what I heard about Oladipo. I personally like Oladipo. I like him. I think he's been through a lot. I think before he got injured, he was really ascending in this game. And I, I believe in the brother. Okay? And he's averaging 20 points a game this year, albeit on 41% shooting, 33% from three-point range, which isn't that a, a, a impressive. In Houston, they were 4-16 and 16 with him. 4-16. and 16. And let's also not forget, you know, you got people in there that didn't mind him being gone. They didn't mind him being gone. And so we got to take that into consideration as well. Now, I don't know what's going on, and I'm not here to cast any aspersions on them. Again, I like the brother. I believe in him. I think he's got a lot of potential. I, the, minute, the minute he gets back healthy, he can be a star again in this league. I'm just not figuring out how what I've seen from Oladipo is going to work this year in Miami. Well, you got Duncan Robinson. You can take him off the bench. He's a sniper. I didn't even mention Duncan Robinson. You got, who can yeah, shoot the listen, lights out? I'm, I'm glad that, that Miami would have been stupid to give up yeah. Tyler Hero. Don't you dare uh, give that brother up. You hold on to Tyler Hero. Duncan Robinson. Him and hold Duncan Robinson are, are the future in Miami. As far as I'm concerned, Jimmy Butler is now, and I believe in Jimmy Butler. I believe in him. Jimmy Buckets, I believe in him totally, okay? And, and Bam Adebayo is who he is. I'm just saying I'm not sure what Victor Oladipo 
does for this team this year. Next year and beyond, if he ended up staying, that would be different. But right now, it's presently constructed. I've got my suspicions about Miami this year. He was the with best. Victor Oladipo, Oladipo was the best player, clearly the clearly the number one player on a good team in Indiana, right? Yes, he was, absolutely. He was very good. And okay, he was ascending. Now injuries set you back, but yeah. this year it's going to be another ascen ascension, right? Like little by little, when you come off an injury or when I, you miss I just time. think I just think next year and beyond is fine. This oh, year is a question. Mark. Even if he's, I agree, he'd probably be better next year than he is right. this year. But he isn't. He's additive to this team. Think about what you just said. Tyler Hero, who showed me something in the playoffs last year, he stepped up. Mm -hmm. He was he was a great player. Like, he was a good player who turned into a great I'm player. I'm not letting go Tyler to Hero. Tyler Hero's a future star. Duncan player. Robinson's excellent. Jimmy Butler's excellent. Bam's excellent. You say no problem with those no guys. No problem with those Iguodala guys. Iguodala as a veteran guy. Who Absolutely. Can do That's, be on any team. We're up to five already, okay. right? So who are we talking about? Dragic? What do you think of Dragic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now Oladipo? I You've like got Dragic. so many guys I like coming Dragic. at you. Look, again, none of them are scrubs. All of them can play. I'm not saying anything negative in that regard. What I'm saying is when we look at the Eastern Conference, Brooklyn, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia, I'm looking at Miami and I'm saying, okay, it'll be an interesting series. But Miami right now is what I viewed them as being last year. We were all wrong last year because we didn't see them going to the finals, even though I picked them to beat Milwaukee, and you did it. Actually, I did because I picked them to beat Boston too. Yep. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is this year, I'm not picking them to come out of this. Go look at the board. See, yes. Look at the screen. Yes. Goodbye, hey, Hawks. Hey, goodbye, hey, Knicks. Hey, goodbye, hey, Hornets. Hold They're on, in fourth. Well, first of all, Lou Williams in Atlanta is not bad. Atlanta had won eight straight with Nate McMillan. Yeah. With Nate McMillan. Let's give yeah, love let's to Nate McMillan up. and the job that he has done. All right, even though I'm sorry that Lloyd Pierce is without a job. The bottom line is... This still elevates Miami to a, a, a legitimate top four, especially the way Boston is looking this year. Still in all, though. I'm, I'm just not sure it works this year. I, it, I, if I'm it other gives teams them in the it East, gives them depth. And, and we left off the biggest thing. They still have Jimmy Butler. And when the pressure comes on, Jimmy Butler is a dog. I believe And in that it. makes a difference listen, in the listen. playoffs. If Jimmy Butler was on Philadelphia instead of Miami, yep. okay? We'd be talking about Philadelphia coming out of the East. Maybe not if Durant is healthy. Yeah. Huh? Maybe not if not, yeah, Maybe not, yet. but I'm talking about Embiid, Simmons, yeah, yeah. Butler, back. the whole is in South Beach. Does that mean the Heat are returning to the NBA Finals? And of course, there's news out of Big D involving Mike McCarthy. I guess if you want to call it, Cal. Why are they relevant anyway? Max will answer that question. Stephen A, I'm in the house too. First day. Max. NBA trade deadline is in the books. Kyle Lowry still a Raptor. I don't know if Victor Oladipo has that tough skin to match that Miami Heat culture. Celtics made their significant move today. It's not enough. We're no longer going to be living in basketball purgatory in the Windy City. Now you add Aaron Gordon to the mix. Huge pickup for Denver. One of the best things that could have possibly happened for the Clippers just happened. You could say that Miami was the winner of the trade deadline. Um, did we just go first person before the show even started? That means Stephen A must be on one after all the action that happened yesterday. The trade deadline came and went, gentlemen. Happy Friday, a feel-good Friday to everybody at home. Stephen A. Smith, Max Kellerman, I'm Molly Karam Rose. Fellas, let's dive right into it, and we'll start with the Clippers. The Atlanta Hawks trade Rajon Rondo to L.A. to the Clippers for Lou Williams, sweet Lou. In future second-round picks, the Clips are third in the West and now have playoff Rondo. Mr. Smith, what does this move mean for the Clippers? Well, to me, it means that they definitely have improved significantly. It's not just because you've got a point guard, a legitimate bona fide quintessential point guard, not just somebody who's stout on the defensive end of the floor or who's supposed to be stout on the offensive end of the floor. You have a cerebral guy at the point guard spot to run your offense, freeing up the Paul Georges and Kawhi Leonard's of those responsibilities putting them in a position where they get to just do their thing as opposed to having to facilitate opportunities for themselves. And that's a big, big deal. Then you take into account it's playoff Rondo that we're talking about here because that's what you got him for. We know what he can do. He's a reigning defending NBA champion. He was on that Lakers squad last year. He knows how to run a team. He's a two-time champion. Experience and all of that stuff that comes with it, he's got that. Then you have to take into consideration the fact that because he's with the Clippers, 
how much did that potentially do to the Lakers, which is something we'll get into a little bit later, because you're talking about a guy that's incredibly familiar with the things that the Lakers like to do in order to be successful. So he's able to bring his, or his already supreme intellect to the equation. But then when you combine that with his knowledge of what they want to do and how they want to do it, because he's been their teammates, you never know what kind of profound impact that that could have. But ultimately, it all equals to this. There is no excuses, and it puts Kawhi Leonard in the line of fire. The pressure has mounted significantly. He wanted a point guard desperately.